Hello students, welcome back to the video on marketing management. I am Tirtha Prasad K, Assistant Professor in Commerce, GFJC Chennapatna. We are studying the module number 2, Marketing Mix and Legal Aspects of Marketing. In the picture on the left side, you can see some people running in a race. So what they are basically doing? They are competing with one another, right? So they are competing with one another to win the race. So the topic for today's lesson is competition. We shall set the objectives of the class. We are going to understand the provisions of Competition Act. We understand the role of CCI, that is Competition Commission of India, which is a national authority on competition in India. We also study the definitions of certain terms. Come on students, we shall start the lesson on Competition Act 2002. Let me introduce you into the act. Intense or cutthroat competition is a positive sign of healthy business environment. Right? So there will be a number of business firms in any industry. If there is a healthy competition, if there is a tough competition among them, it is beneficial for the consumers. All the business firms try to produce uh, products or services at competitive prices, which is beneficial for the consumer. So there should, there should be a healthy competition in any business environment. And MRTP Act 1969. MRTP stands for Monopolistic and Restrictive Trade Practices Act 1969. It has been repealed and replaced by Competition Act. And in 1991 industrial policy, LPG was introduced. LPG stands for Liberalization, Privatization and Globalization. So it gave a competing power, competing ability or a level playing field for micro enterprises against MNCs. And World Bank defines competition as a situation in a market in which firms and sellers independently strike for the buyer's patronage in order to achieve a particular business objective that may be profit, sales or market share. A few types of activity are generally prohibited like bid rigging, predatory pricing, price fixing, tying, vendor lock. So these type of activities are prohibited. And there is a fine line between competitive behavior and anti-competitive behavior. Suppose for example, a monopolist reduces prices in order to prevent the entry of a new competitor into the industry then it is anti-competitive behavior. But it is legal. Nobody can ask him to uh, keep the uh, prices at the same level. Okay. So he has power to reduce the prices. And we shall learn the objectives of the act. The act ensures Fair competition in India. So competition should be fair, it should be healthy and it prohibits trade practices that cause adverse effects on competition on markets within India. Okay. So restrictive trade practices, unfair trade practices, monopolistic trade practices are prohibited through this act. It curbs the negative aspects of competition through CCI, 
Competition Commission of India. It protects the interests of consumers and enjoy freedom of trade in markets. So business firms should enjoy freedom of trade but in the same way consumers interests should also be protected. So we shall look at some of the definitions given on certain terms. Practice refers to any practice relating to carrying on of any trade by a person or an enterprise. Okay, so practice refers to a method or it refers to behavior of any person or enterprise related to any trade. Relevant market. So relevant market means the market which may be determined by the commission CCI with reference to the relevant product market or relevant geographic market or with reference to both the markets. So when relevant market is mentioned in the act, it may refer to relevant product market or relevant geographic market or both the markets. Okay. Then service. So service of any description which is made available to potential users and includes the provision of services in connection with business of any industrial or commercial matters. Okay. So an industrial or commercial entity provides these services okay like banking communication education financing insurance chit funds real estate transport etc a long list has been given in this act which is not necessary okay so all these are called services then trade trade means any trade, business, industry, profession or occupation relating to the production, supply, distribution, storage or control of goods and provision of any services. Okay. So trade includes goods as well as services. Their production, supply, distribution, storage or control. Turnover. You have heard the word turnover. So turnover means sales value. Sales value of goods or services. Next one, agreement. Agreement is relating to production, supply, distribution, storage, acquisition or control of goods or services which causes or likely to cause an appreciable adverse effect on competition in India shall be void. So under this act, such agreements are void. Such agreements which have adverse effect on competition. Adverse effect on competition are void. So those agreements may relate to production, supply, distribution, storage, acquisition control of goods and services okay cartel cartel is an association of producers sellers distributors traders or service providers who by agreement amongst themselves limit control or attempt to control the production distribution sale or price of trade in goods okay so nobody is supposed to do that nobody is supposed to limit or control production distribution sale or price of goods and services so if these producers sellers distributors etc form an association for that purpose then it is called a cartel which is prohibited Consumer. Consumer means any person 
आपको बाईस गुड्स फॉर कंसिडरेशन फॉर अ कंसिडरेशन आई मीन प्राइस and includes any user of such goods other than that person who buys such goods for consideration okay so first one is the purchaser the second one is the user okay so both are consumers as per this definition then acquisition section 5 of the act defines this term the combinations as section 5 of the act describes and states the combinations as the acquisition of enterprises by any person merger or amalgamation of enterprises will be a combination of enterprises if in an acquisition if the party gains a good influence over the weight voting rates or gains control over the assets of an enterprise and the value of the assets for an amount greater than INR 1000 crores or the overall turnover of the enterprise is get greater than INR 3000 crores or even if the total value of assets exceeds 500 million us dollars it's quite long sentence okay i will put it in simple words okay as per section 5 acquisition is a combination okay acquisition is a combination of enterprises or merger of enterprises or amalgamation of enterprises okay in which one business firm gets a good influence over the voting rights okay one business firm gets a good influence over the voting rights or gains control over the assets of the other enterprise gains control over the assets of the other enterprise and value of the assets value of the assets over which control is gained should be greater than 1000 crore rupees okay 1000 crore rupees or the overall turnover of the enterprise is greater than 3000 crore rupees or even if the total value of the assets exceed 500 million us dollars so these three amounts have been mentioned okay then it is called acquisition they have put these limits because acquisition may happen at lower levels also a small brand a small company may be acquired by a big company but that doesn't affect competition much okay then under this act that is not considered as acquisition okay because it doesn't have a serious impact on competition it's a small company it's a small brand okay so that is why these uh, amount limits have been kept and the next one cci competition commission of india the picture you see is the sign board of cci okay the logo so this is the logo of cci so it is set up to curb the negative aspects of competition and this body corporate has perpetual succession and common seal just like a company it has power to acquire hold dispose movable and immovable property in its own name okay its head office is in new delhi and offices at other places in india it comprises of not less than 2 and not less than sorry not less than 2 and not more than 6 other members whole time a 
appointed by central government. Qualification of chairperson and other members. Ability, integrity and standing. They should have special knowledge and professional experience for 15 years in certain subject. Okay. So that is the qualification for chairperson and other members. They should have ability, integrity and standing. They should have special knowledge and professional experience for 15 years in certain subjects. And there is a post called Director General or DG who is appointed for investigation investigation for CCI DG has no suo moto powers suo moto powers means he cannot register complaints on his own okay he has to investigate complaints given by other people he cannot register complaint on his own he has no suo moto powers he can conduct inquiry into the contravention of any of the provisions of the act and such other functions as may be provided. The number of other joint additional deputy and assistant DG or such officer or other employees in DG office and the manner of their appointment as may be prescribed such officers to exercise powers and discharge functions subject to general control, supervision and direction of DG. Okay. So DG may appoint a number of additional DGs or joint DGs or deputy DGs or assistant DGs. Okay. And they will exercise powers and discharge functions subject to the general control of DG or supervision and direction of DG. Salary, allowances and other terms and conditions of DG and other as may be prescribed under the Act. DG and others have integrity. This, so these are the qualifications. So everybody every member of DG office should have integrity and standing, experience in investigation, knowledge, okay, and professional experience of a certain number of years in certain subjects. And what are the duties of CCA? Firstly, it eliminates practices having adverse effect on competition. So those restrictive practices, monopolistic practices, unfair trade practices, which have adverse effect on competition. Okay. It promotes and sustains competition, healthy competition. It protects the interests of consumers. It enjoys freedom of trade. Okay, so business firms should enjoy freedom of trade. Okay, so it makes sure that business firms enjoy freedom of trade in markets. So everybody has opportunity to grow their business, sell their products or services, generate revenue. Okay, so that is called freedom of trade. So CCA ensures that Everybody has freedom of trade. So now we shall see powers and functions of CCI. It may enter into any memorandum or arrangement with any agency of foreign country with prior approval of the central government. Okay. It can inquire into any alleged contravention of provisions either on its own motion or on receipt of any information from any person, consumer or their association 
or trade association or a reference made to it by the central government or state government or statutory authority. So information may be provided by any person. Complaint may be made by any person, but CCI has to act on it. So it has to take action. The commission shall, while determining whether while determining whether an agreement has an appreciable adverse effect on competition, have due regard to all or any of the factors, namely creation of barriers to new entrants in the market, driving existing competitors out of the market, foreclosure of competition by hindering entry into the market. Okay, so you understood the sentence. So while determining, while deciding whether a particular activity has adverse effect on competition or not, CCA checks for a few facts. Okay whether it creates barriers to new entrants in the market, whether it drives existing competitors out of the market, or it closes competition by hindering entry into the market. Okay? If the activity is responsible for any of these, then it will have adverse effect on competition. So it is anti-competitive practice. Next one, the commission while inquiring whether an enterprise enjoys a dominant position or not have due regard to all or any of the factors, namely market share of the enterprise, okay, size and resources of the enterprise, size and importance of competition, etc. So while deciding whether an enterprise enjoys a dominant position or not in the industry then it checks for a few factors like market share of the enterprise size and resources of the enterprise size and importance of competition etc then it decides whether it has a dominant position or not there are other powers as well Enquiry into combinations, okay. So, combinations refer to merger, acquisition, amalgamation, okay. CCA can enquire into such combinations, it can exercise powers through benches of the commission. So, there are different benches all over the country, so it can exercise powers through those benches. It can order inquiry into agreements or abuse of dominant position. If some business firm is abusing its dominant position or making a cartel agreement with producers and distributors, it can order an inquiry into the uh, agreements or practices. Division of enterprise enjoying dominant position. So CCA can order for division of enterprise, I mean dividing the enterprise into several subdivisions. Okay. If it is enjoying dominant position and abusing it, it can issue orders on certain combinations. Okay. So it can issue the relevant orders on certain combinations. It can conduct inquiry into acts taking place outside India but having an effect on competition in India. So there are certain activities which take place outside India but they have impact on competition in India. So CCA can take action on that also. So it can conduct an inquiry into such activities also. Thank you students. Thank you for your patient listening.
keep studying study well for the exams all the best